Welcome everybody in today's mid-July session, English course with your regular English facilitator, Rakesh Swesta. Welcome you all. It's a beautiful Wednesday, like always. Uh, if I am right, okay, in our last week's class, we paused here. On my screen, I can see second conditionals, few examples, and then I ended the clause saying that we will resume this next week. So today, like I've mentioned on the board, we're going to okay, have a small resume, resuming with the conditionals, and the remaining session or in today's class, I will be backing up with okay, some extra vocabulary skills. So I got it here, additional few vocabulary skills, and I'll come to those green text and blue text ideas meanwhile. So if you can just focus I will. Uh, I would like to speak uh, about this particular screen. Okay, the text that I have displayed. This was what we discussed last time, and in uh, this particular screening, I was focusing on the ideas of the use of second conditionals with free variation in the use of okay the modal auxiliaries that we can use in the main clause, highlighted here in some examples: would, might, and could. They have got their specific uses, like we discussed. Just read the examples, starting from number one, the use of oud. When you use oud, when you consider that the result is uh, more definite or certain. So example, if Peter asks Karen out, she would say yes. You use might, okay, when you consider the result, okay, have 50% of chances of happening as well as not happening. And that's why, okay, there is an example. If Peter asks Karen out, she might say yes, or which means, okay, she might say no as well. If we go with the third example, could, okay, could is used to talk about possibilities of the result, and here's the example. Uh, I could, uh, okay, I, I, if I had a million dollars, I could buy a helicopter, or I could live in a mansion, or I could quit my job, and I could live on my own. So, this is where, okay, we were in our last class, and I prefer to move on. Resuming with the conditionals. Now basically, in today's uh, class, I'll talk about some interesting things about the conditional. This is the first case. Let's see which is correct. Now what is this which is correct? Look at there, on your screen, you've got two sentences. Okay, It's the same sentence actually, but there is a change. What is that change? You must have identified the change is, of course, the to be verb, was and where. If I was rich, I would buy a boat, or if I were rich, I would buy a boat. Now, if you have MCQs, like the multiple choice questions, or your teachers simply ask you, which one is right, or do you consider both right? If you remember again, again, my previous class, I have wary about one possible factor of determining the answer. What was it that was the context? So the context of a country, the place where you are living in, the grammar rules that are prescribed for you in that particular area actually determines the answer. And I focused on the prescriptive rule of grammar that we take from exam point of view. So according to that particular idea, I would always recommend students okay, focusing on the conditional rules used by the English people as well. I would consider the second sentence is right, if I were rich. Now why that? Look at the sentence, the next sentence. If Dana was uh, here right now, she would agree. If Dana were right now, she would agree. The word, okay, were versus was. We all know was is a singular choice, where is a plural choice. But if you're using if, if you're using if part, the rule always tells you whatever the subject, either the subject is singular or plural, your choice is always where. So that becomes the example. If I were, if you were, if she were, if they were, okay, if everyone were. And that's how we prefer to use the grammar, hence, Always focus on where in type 2 if you're using if. So that is one example. And the next idea here is if I were you, okay, I have just told you you're going to use 
if I wear. This particular spatial be verb in English is also preferred to be used okay, in inversion case. This is what I'm going to talk about, all right? I'll go with more examples in my next slide, but because I have put it here, if you're giving this as a kind of an advice to somebody, okay, I can inverse this okay, by changing the position of the words, like what if I bring it here? See what happens? Okay, where I? So if I were, okay, rich, that was the example we're discussing, or uh, maybe this is one verb, or uh, ad uh, adjective. If I were rich, so it becomes were I rich. All right, the letter part becomes the same, but what have we have done is we have simply changed the position of the V verb, and with that I have preferred removing if. This happens with the inversion case, and this is, okay, a very likely change that you will see in novels and the English people speaking. Okay, here is one good example, okay, with pictures. You can see how to use second conditional. See, the situation of the present, okay, is Jack wants to buy a house, but he can't do because he doesn't have any money. Now, how do you put that into the conditional second type? Okay, it's here. See, if I had a lot of money, I would buy a big house. Now, how do you understand this as a wish? You're making a wish. Last time I taught you, I wish if only structure. Okay, if only or I wish I had a lot of money to buy a house, which exactly is the same thing, okay, the kind of the ideas that we can go for, rephrase and paraphrase. Join me, okay, keep on joining and we'll talk more about rephrase and paraphrase techniques to make your writing very beautiful. Uh, here is one more example, okay, with another picture that I've got for second conditional. Understand the present situation. We are connecting our present, okay, and trying to relate it with our past. So see, Susan wants to phone Paul, but she can't do this because she doesn't know his number. Now, she would speak something like this. If I knew his number, I would phone him. Or if, if you make a wish, okay, you can say, if only, or I wish I knew his number. Quite simple, right? Now, let us study first and the second conditional and compare them. See the example with the first conditional, okay, type one. If John runs fast, he will win the race. This is likely because the action can still take place in our near future. A moment after or maybe a one hour later, this is still possible. But see with this second example, okay, if John ran, when I chain that runs into the past tense, ran and used type two, if John ran fast, he would win the rest. What does it mean, okay? This is unlikely to happen because John does not run fast. All right, when you go up and try to read, if John runs fast, he will win the race, though there is a possibility of, okay, John winning the rest, I would still say like, he might not win, all right? That's a different case. We're making a kind of a prediction. So you always need to understand the intention of the speaker when you're exchanging language, when you're exchanging ideas. You focus. What is the main intention and what is the idea the speaker is trying to communicate? That way, okay, we understand language. Uh, moving further, okay, now we jump into the third conditional, okay, imagining that the past had been different. So with the first cases that we've discussed, we discussed the present to be different. Now we're going to the second step, imagining our past to be different. Examples, let's imagine a different past using wish, okay, for hypothetical past situation. I, last time, okay, I used this word, hypothetical past, imaginary past. So we've got wish plus past perfect, had plus Past, okay, past participles. Examples. I was late for work. I wish I had woken up 15 minutes earlier. Next, I wish I hadn't eaten that seafood yesterday. It made me sick. Now, see a little bit of change I will make. I wish I hadn't eaten that seafood yesterday. I made me sick. Can be also written like, okay, if I hadn't eaten that seafood, okay, I would not have been sick. See this transformation, okay, in which I tried the ideas of, okay, rephrasing or paraphrasing or restating, in which I try to, okay, maintain the same meaning that is communicated by this particular sentence. And this is what you do. This skill will always, okay, beautify your expressions. There are rhetorics that you need to understand, and a part of these techniques can definitely help you make your writing very, very impressive, unlike the other ordinary writings or the writers.
So you got this. This is use expressive regret. And uh, if you remember my previous class, if you had stayed connected with that, you must have remember I taught you about the regret possibilities, okay, using if. Uh, this is what we're talking about. But sometimes, okay, we can also talk about regret by using sued positive and negative. For example, okay, I can simply say, I should not have watched that film. Now I'm regretting, or I should have watched the interview. That was so interesting. I got to know ab about it later, okay, from my friends. So we can use should, we can use I wish, we can use if with type three for expressing regrets. Third conditional, more examples, okay, with the pictures. Now try to understand the past to be a little different. Jack wanted, see, now this time I'm using wanted because I'm talking about past. Jack wanted to buy a house last year, but he couldn't do that because he didn't have any money. Now at present, how would you talk about this using type three? See, it's here. If I had had, double had, a lot of money, I would have bought a big house. Type three, of course. One more example, okay, with a lady, okay, talking about phone. Yesterday, Susan wanted to phone Paul, but she couldn't do that because she didn't know his number. Now, how would you talk about this? Okay, with type three, it's right here. If I had known his, look at the transformation. It's not like I, if I knew. This is, if I had known his number, I would have phoned him, which means, okay, she didn't have the number, so she didn't phone Paul. As simple as that. Okay, now let us uh, look at all the conditionals in one single frame and try to understand their meanings. Here I have tried using the same sentence and okay, transform them into varieties of conditionals we have got. If it rains, the grass gets weight. That is general time reference. Okay, possibilities may happen, may not happen. You never know. Okay, if you have kept the grass covered, they won't get wet probably, but if you have left it free, okay, they would get, they would get, definitely. So this is number one now. If it rains today, you will get wet. See, the comparison again, if it rains, the grass gets wet. You consider that this is a general assumption that it happens, so use type zero. Or if you go with type one, if it rains today, you will get wet, okay. Now, this is what you consider. You don't have an umbrella, you will get wet. But if you have it, you won't right, the possibilities. Change it into, okay, type two. If it rained, you would get wet. Now, will changes into wood, okay, but the sky is blue. Look at the evidences that you're studying, that you're observing your surrounding, but the sky is blue. This is unlikely to happen. So, you're present, you're making a study, and then you say, if it rained, you would get wet. If we go with type three here, okay, if it had rained, I mean, you would have got wet, but it didn't rain, so you didn't get wet. That is the past situation that is clearly understood. Now, after having understood all the types of the conditionals, okay, we would like to talk about reversion and inversion cases in exchanging the clause and some words, type two and type three. One I have already explained to here. If you had listened to me, okay, I have already explained. Now, what is this inversion or uh, reversion case? See here, a simple example I would draw. If Thomas had bought the cheese, okay? Look at the situation I'm drawing. If Thomas had bought the cheese, okay, we would have made, now what can you make out of cheese? There are plenty of things you can make, you just need to think of one. If Thomas had bought the cheese, he would have made, okay, uh, okay, maybe with cheese, okay, you can make a sandwich, right? Or some other things, whatever you want to. Here, the, con the, uh, the concept is not about talking about this particular idea, okay? We're talking about the transformation. So the transformation happens like the one I taught you previously. This had, if you bring it here, and there will read something like, see, had thermos, all right? Had thermos, but the cheese, and then you put it on the same thing. This is something that we do, okay, with the idea of the 
color texture that I have shown you. Sometimes they might even bring this particular part, all right? There is an object, whatever, not important. You would have made dot, 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 okay? And then you continue, if Thomas had bought the cheese. Now with that, what we do is we bring variation in our writing. And when you do that, okay, you appreciate it for your skills of using, okay, language. Keep on trying with that. Okay, and that is only possible with type 3, like I mentioned on the street. Type 2, it's not possible with all because, okay, we only focus on the verb were. Remember, okay, uh, a few minutes ago, I taught you about this where, if I were, if she were, if they were. Now, with those possibilities, we can use, okay, where I, smart, where they, listening to me. I can use that way. But if there is a main verb like, okay, if... I talked. Simple example, if I talk to somebody, if I talk to you like that way, I cannot use this with this inversion case like, okay, talked I. That doesn't happen, so you have to ignore this. It's only possible with where verb in type 2, but with type 3, it's possible with all examples of had, positive, or negative. Okay, here are a few more examples, and this is, uh, I'm not going to stay focused on this for a lot of time because uh, I'm interested in doing on the vocabulary skill. Why I have displayed this space is this place will take you to a newer perspective of understanding conditional where we simply do not rely on the words would. So most of us in schools, and even up to now, we had always focused on the concept of the word would. Okay, in conditional. But like I've introduced, okay, in my previous examples, we might use might, we might use could. It depends, okay. Why are you choosing this particular model auxiliary? Here is the brief example. I want you to study, okay, later in my recordings. And then after that, you will try to make a similar sentences and also notice a bit of tense variation okay, in type 3 conditionals from past perfect to past perfect continuous. See, there are certain variations. Read, understand, and make up your meanings. For more, if you want to know about conditionals, you can visit this particular okay, site. I have got it here. Slowly, okay, you can type or later you can pause the recording video and then, of course, you will get this and you will learn more about conditionals. Now with that, okay, we have ended the conditionals and I have moved on with my new skills today. So that is special vocabularies and we will learn not only so and such, but many others. And we will try to understand their structures, the rigid structures, how they are used in English language, and how, when you're using these vocabularies, special vocabularies, you can understand the concept of rephrase and paraphrase. That is the next concern that we are moving on with. All right, let's begin. I'll get the board clean first, okay. Right here, it's done. This is done. Now, this is what we're doing, adding few vocabulary skills in our everyday language, so and such. So how do we use so and such? Let's study a few examples, and I will try to teach you with the syntax. We often use so and such to talk about cause and effect. Cause and effect, if you remember, type one, conditional sentence, likely, probable, whatever the name that you give, okay, real conditionals. We also talk about cause and effect. Now, how do study cause and effect with these? See the example here. Okay, the problem was so difficult that we can solve it. Okay, we're talking about the use of so, spatial word. The problem was so difficult. Now, when I say so difficult, what do you notice? I use so difficult, so plus adjective. Okay, this is what I, am, I, I make up my mind with. The problem was so difficult. Now, when I use so, I demand a reason. I demand an explanation. Like, why are you saying so? I could have simply said, okay, the problem was difficult, and you would have understood. But to what level, okay, is the difficulty that I face? So then I write, the problem was so difficult that we can solve it. Now, what does it mean? It's that, and then you add a clause. All right, you add a clause. So that is the structure that we are using. 
Now in the bracket on the screen, I have just written very. How is very similar or dissimilar to so? Can I say like uh, I am okay so hot, or okay I am very hot, or I feel hot, or I feel so hot? How do you say that? Now, and which one is right? So basically, we use very to intensify the meaning of either adjective or adverb. Like a simple example, it is very hot today. Now, when you say that, okay, I understand. It's very hot. It's understood. But can I say, like, it is so hot today? When I say that, okay, I prefer explanation. Like this example, okay, I feel so hot today, or it is so hot today that I can't go outside. See, I use a clause. So you always have to connect the clause if you're using so in your language to make your listener feel more comfortable in understanding your ideas. That's what we use the example. More example, now if I use instead of so, okay, such. What are some changes that takes place in my sentence? See, it was such a difficult problem that we couldn't solve it. The clause remains the same, that we couldn't solve it. But look at the changes, it was such a difficult problem. And with that, when I use such, what have I brought? Look at the structure, understand the structure is like you use such and then NP. What is this NP? I would call it a noun phrase. All right, noun phrase because you have a noun. So you always use such with a noun. Next, so, such a difficult problem, such smart people, okay? That's how I use it. Move on. We'll go with the next example. So this is what I have done. So plus adjective, so plus adjective. Now you can have so plus adverb. Now how do we get adverb? We'll get the example right here. See the example. The first one comes with this first one, so plus adjective. Always remember, so and adjective. The car was so expensive that we couldn't buy it. So expensive. But how do you use adverb? See there? He spoke so quickly. Maybe I'm speaking very quickly right now. Okay, I really don't know, but this is an example. He spoke so quickly that I can understand him. So quickly. Quickly, the LY is the adverb. Okay, adverb of manner. If you have understood me well. Now, there were so many people. With so, I use many. Okay, so and many. Then what do you use? Of course, you use a noun right over here when you use noun. But what kind of noun do you use? So many people, this noun with so and many, you use countable nouns. Because I got to count, like many. How many? How many stars? I can count them. Though they are countless, I can still count them, and that becomes countable. So, so many stars, so many people, so many boys, so many okay, people, so many uh, countries. That's how I keep on using that. But if I use so and much, see, what do I use? Much. I can count, okay, something, which is, we call it, okay, they're nouns, but uncountable. Now, why uncountable? Because you can count them. Simple example, so much noise, I can count the noise. So much, okay, uh, salt, so much uh, sugar, so much milk, so much of water. That's how you can keep on using that. There was so much noise that I couldn't hear. I got completely disturbed. The maze was so cleverly designed that nobody could escape it. So cleverly, okay, that's again the use of so plus adverb. Here we go with more examples. And the use of such now, such plus adjective, okay, we talk about that. Now, previous was such plus noun phrase, okay? such a smart guy. Now here we're talking about such plus adjective plus noun and then that clause. The that clause remains the same. It was such a hot day. Now why? I was giving the example previously too, that I went for a swim. It was such hot weather that I went for a swim or they are such good players that they will probably win the game. Now why these skills are important, my dear students, you got to know about rephrase and paraphrase in English language or in Nepali language. When you are reading something from okay, the authors and when you try to explain them okay, in your own words, you should have remember okay, one particular heading that appears in all exam, English exam. Okay? Write your answer using your own language or credit will be given to originality. Now what is this originality? Of course it comes with this. You read something and you put that idea in the same way without making changes in the meaning that you have understood. But when you do that, of course, you're going to put that in your own words. What will help you? Here's a technique. All right? 
choose off the other words contextually don't change the meaning add words delete words change the positions okay do a lot of thing but ultimately make sure that you're giving the same idea but with your original way and that's how you become smart let's see more sentences there were such a lot of people that now that okay the effect that you can talk about there was such a lot of noise that yeah they're done see we can also use so and such without a death clause as an emphatic way now this is interesting i'll put it here again emphatic how to bring this emphasis okay in our writing emphatic way emphatic way uh, to bring the emphasis in fact when i introduced these vocabulary skills to you i spoke on this idea okay to replace the idea of very or rarely the two examples i have brought for you people okay the first one is here this dress is so beautiful with the expression that you say they see I, I don't say it like in a doll way this dress is so beautiful i don't say like that i say this dress is so beautiful with a meaning which is almost equivalent to the word very very beautiful okay you you put that emphasis on that particular idea or our neighbors are such a friendly people now when you're saying this to your listeners they would understand you're talking about your neighbors being really really friendly so it, they're a substituted word of course you can say it like the dress is very beautiful our neighbors are very friendly or they're really friendly that's one way of saying and these are the other ways and why do you need to learn the other ways i have always focused on that part to bring the variation in our speech to bring the variation in our writing and that is how you would be able to become like a painter who can paint magnificent arts and create masterpiece your writing is one day okay your masterpiece unless you have all these skills borrowed and learned and furnished okay you will never ever groom like the one you are expecting in you yeah we got it here okay more examples again see uh simple very simple but if you focus on the syntax only it will appear difficult i understand that because it always happens and that that is the reason why i ignore the syntax in all my previous grammar drills and the classes they always get people confused today we will not get confused and if you are right now feeling like you are taking bullets in your head let's just consider okay that we're doing a small surgery a kind of a thing in which okay i will try to tranquilize you with my ideas and you feel better two plus adjective or adverb four nouns so see four object plus two infinitive the music is too loud what is that four plus noun okay i will get the example in the third see uh he speaks too loudly he's too old for the job he is too old to apply for the job the noun four plus noun and now what is that infinitive part see sometimes you also need to add two plus verb on infinitive which is the last sentence okay here in the screen it's too cold for the kids to go out so repeat from the top the music is too loud it's two plus adjective again remember okay if you're using two two plus adjective if you're using okay enough we are not discussing on this but if you're using enough where does the adjective occur is it here or here should you say okay enough beautiful or beautiful enough so i would say like beautiful enough so beautiful that is adjective it becomes here adjective plus enough but again see if you are trying to use okay instead of saying okay beautiful enough you got to focus on the noun then how do i say i will you to see enough enough beauty i transform the idea of beautiful into beauty and say enough beauty beautiful enough enough beauty the position is like adjective plus enough enough plus noun that's how we study so the music is too loud two plus adjective he speaks too loudly two plus adverb he is too old for the job you continue up to four plus noun object he is too old okay to apply for the job you're changing the position of the infinitive and the noun and then you have it's too cool for the kids to go out you gave a reason for stating why okay it's cold oh what is the meaning exactly that you're trying to say when you say it's too cold for the kids 
to go out, so they would rather prefer to stay in. Right, okay, more examples coming. There were too many people in the room, many because people is countable, remember? There, were, uh, there was too much noise, much because noise is uncountable. And more examples coming again, okay? See here, with the use of enough that I've said, uh, it's warm enough, he speaks slowly enough, he isn't old enough to order a beer, Understand the composition, the position of the words, when you use these vocabularies, where do they occur and what are the other parts in a sentence that can continue to make a good sentence. Yeah, the last one probably popping okay, out on my screen. We've got more examples. The time is okay over, so I will simply show you the sentences that I have brought. Okay, this was quick. You can see, you can study, and you can practice, and you can implement them okay, in your writing. Uh, rephrasing the sentences, making changes. I was talking about it, so I put this for you on the screen so that you can understand the constructions uh, later after my classes. One more time, there's a display. Okay, that is all for today's class. I hope I have uh, brought to you interesting vocabulary skills. And uh, with that, what I expect you people doing okay, after the class is over is instantly okay, grab your pen, get your notebook, and of course, whatever you understood, try to okay, bring the memories, recap my ideas, and use all these vocabulary skills okay, and develop any kind of writing that you like to see how you have transferred today's okay, skills in your understanding. You can be the better judge of yourself, nobody else. And if you're listening to me very carefully, thank you so much because I have always believed in the idea that a good listener is very popular than a good speaker. With this, we will sign out together. Bye-bye. Have a wonderful day. <laughs>